Good morning. How are you? Welcome to Real Talk with Devin Will. It is a fabulous another, another Monday, a little over, overcast here, but uh, we are happy to be with you this morning. Yeah, we have 50% chance of rain today. So what does that mean? Might rain? It's going to rain. Might not. Might, might rain, might fitty, not. Fitty, fitty. Might rain, might not. What a great job being a meteorologist. Might rain today, everybody. Put an umbrella in your car. You might need it. Just in case. Or you might not. Back to you, Bill. <laughs> Great job. But they get like 20 minutes of the news. I'm telling you that it might rain somewhere else. Well, you're never going to be. Well, you've never been. And you're not going to. What a great job. I should get that job. How do you get that job? Do you have to have a degree? No, you don't have to have a degree. It's a great job. All right. Um, this morning, uh, we are going to um, give you part one. This is only part one. This is the, the prelude. It, um, so to speak, a PG of a 13. of a uh, 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 of a uh, a program that we have actually thought about doing the entire time that we've um, been doing this, uh, because it is there are two major hurdles I think in marriage and um, money and sex are the one are, are the two big things um, in marriage. They usually damage your marriage and they usually are, break it up. And are usually the most misunderstood, and I think most most of all because they're the mo- they're the least talked about, the least expo- explored. Because obviously both of them end up being very very personal, um, and people are, are are easy to take offense um, and become defensive. So I think, hey, Janetta, good morning. So I think it's really important um, that we that you have that discussion um, about both things, really. Uh, beforehand, if you can. Um, Nowadays, most people are having sex before they are married. So um, they think that they don't need to discuss how it's going to change or what's going to happen when we actually get married or what's going to, you know, when we're going to do it and different things like that, because you think, well, we got that part of our relationship down because we already done it. We've been practicing. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, To give you, um, before we get into the larger scope of this, um, uh, uh, you know, about the whole living together uh, and playing house and being wifey. God, I hate that term so much. Um, I do. I hate that term so much. It's so disrespectful to what wives are and and should be that I hate it. Um, but that's just that's just me. Uh, I'm right, but that's just me. Um, but um, for my personal standpoint, we got married. Uh, we had been cohabitating. Um, that's not a secret. Uh, and then we got married. Um, <laughs> actually, we. we we spent the night apart and then got married yeah, and, the and then went back to the apartment. And, and I'll we tell you, in. we were living in before, we were living in before where all our stuff was and things were different. That's all. It was different. It was different than when, when we were there the morning previous. It was different. So I'll tell you, there is, I mean, things do change when you get married, when you decide to commit. Um, forever, uh, think thirty years ago, things things will ch- things will change. Once you make that covenant, and that's what marriage is. We talked about that in church yesterday. About it's it's a covenant, and we'll go into the blood details and all that stuff in our nighttime talk. But uh, <laughs> yes, it is um, a a covenant between husband and wife, and uh, it's very important that you talk in counseling or with the two of you, you know, about mar- about sex after marriage. Um, it's different. Uh, it, and I think the main reason why it's different is because it's spiritual. And people put marriage, you know, like it's just a big party. You just celebrate and you're getting together and all this stuff like that. Marriage is spiritual. Um, whether it's between a man and a woman or a man and a man, a woman, you know, that's why it's such a big debate between people because, you know, um, uh, it's, it's not just being together. 
it's it's your souls connecting as well. And I think a lot of people miss that there are. <clears throat> um, I don't want to say there are conditions for sex, um, but it's going. But but the frequency is going to change. Um, and as you grow as a and as you grow as a person, as you grow and change, as your and, body and, and lives <laughs> and you live as a human being. Um, there are going to be things that are going to be different. And, and I think that you have, everybody has to be open with that because it, it can be a, a real point of frustration um, for folks. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if one of you likes it more than the other, um, and a lot of people think, oh, men like it more than women, and, you know, you, a man got to have it, man got to have it. Well, women like sex too. Oops. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, and that doesn't see, now make you, you a whore. Now, now that now that you didn't told everybody, um, <laughs> but but I think as we were talking about the um, we we're we we're speaking about the biblical. You know, people go because again, Christians all Christians. Some of y'all are so weird because because <laughs> you have the playbook about how to go about this to make this to make this actually much easier. We talked about, um, and it's been one of our most popular casts thus far about the submissive wife. Yes. Um, and we talked about how the how the husband is to love the wife as Christ loved the church. Now, does does the Bible say something about sex and marriage? Yes. yes. Here's what it says um, in First Corinthians seven one, and I'll just read like one through five. Is now concerning the matters about which of you about which you wrote. Now, this is Paul's letter to, to, to the Corinthian church, or the church at, at, at Corinth. So people have been asking about this all along. This is not a new, which, what's awesome about this, this is not new. No. People have asked about this all along. They, 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 they wrote Paul and said, what about sex? What about sex? What about sex? Uh, so we're still asking the same questions. And Paul answered that saying, it is good for a man not to have such a relationship with a woman. Well, because Paul was like, you know what, you can get caught up in that, you... So, so he decided, but if you're going to do it, y'all should get married. Yes. <laughs> you should get married. Because of the temptation of sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. Now, what that means is that you should, that, that should be the same couple. <laughs> you should be with that one person. This is like, okay, I've got my wife, and then she's got her husband somewhere else. No, that's not how he, he was talking about. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights the husband should give to his wife her con her conjugal rights, her rights to have sex. That's what it means, conjugal. It's, it's a college word. Um, SAT. Uh, I get 11.50 on the SAT. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, but um, <clears throat> old scoring system. So she, your wife has conjugal rights to you. And likewise, the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority of her own body, Relax, everybody. Uh, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Because here's the other part. But the husband, uh, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a limited time, which means you have to talk about it. Yes, you have to discuss. There are and, and and everybody understands there are times. And we'll talk about some of those times, you know, in 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 part two, um, because this this is hardly, you know, some of the stuff is hardly it's breakfast. Not nine it's not, o'clock. Well, it's not oh. breakfast talk. I, you know, what, and I understand, and I, and, I, and we get that. Um, but then come together again, so Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self control. So this is this isn't this is not something. This is not something that has not been asked a lot. For years, this is, thousands of years. So this is an important topic, and I think Paul gives Paul gives the best advice. Paul gives the I mean the same advice that your grandma would give you, because she got that advice from Paul. You know, you ask your grandma, you said, "You better go ahead and sleep with that man," because 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 if you don't, what what do they say? If you somebody don't, else somebody will. else will. Um, They're waiting in the wings. Um, so, that, so, so, so the idea is that that this is what should, you know, what in my in my view should be the basis of a sexual relationship in marriage. Um, that should be where you start, and I think if you start there, you are you are more likely to have a uh, a productive 
and a fulfilling um, and a as much as you can a stress free sexual relationship in marriage. And I keep saying that because all of these rules are inside the confines of marriage. None of these rules apply if you play in house. Yes. It doesn't apply if you haven't made that commitment. Don't yeah. have that covenant with that person. Then, you know, a lot of you, a lot of us get upset when we're living with someone or you're dating, you know, because now dating it includes sex. Um, but you get upset because somebody goes out and they, you know, they, they have, if they're not having an affair. They just decide to have sex with somebody else. Yeah, yeah. The whole idea that that you cannot be married to somebody and cheat on them. You well, not the person. <laughs> they're if single. If yes, everybody's single, they haven't made a commitment to you. They haven't uh, said anything before God that they're going to marry you. You know, say say that they're married to you or anything like that. So you really don't have a right to get upset with somebody. And and this sounds harsh when they go out and they date somebody else cheat on you you know um the 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 woman decides oh well to, to this weekend when me and the girls are going away and they have sex with somebody while they're out or the man does the same thing you have no right to be upset you can be upset but it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean any, a, a hill of beans. you can be mad but because you're going to be, but the idea is that none of these things that we're talking about really apply. I mean, the things we're talking about um, apply to a, in, in this part one and part two girlfriend thing. don't apply to those kind of relationships, which are casual sex relationships, which is a whole nother kettle of fish um, that we're going to talk about at some point and, and, and have <laughs> kettle. I like that phrase, kettle of fish, although I've never actually seen anybody carry fish in a kettle or even... <laughs> You don't even know what a kettle is anymore, do which you? Which is what, why I can, um, and and this is another topic we're going to get into, why with same-sex marriages is why I think they fought so hard to have what we have. Because, you know, you, we always hear that, you know, same-sex relationships, they are more promiscuous and all this stuff. I don't think they're any more promiscuous than than regular, <laughs> you know, heterosexual people. But um, they don't have that covenant. And that's why they wanted it so bad, because they feel like then they are more the norm. Like, you know, you know, and they, not to say that that's, well, they, that's everybody's opinion. They want, you know, I, I, I think people want to feel like they're normal. They want to feel everybody, you know, we, mm -hmm. we talk bad about the mainstream, but it's the mainstream for a reason, because everybody wants to be in it. Uh, everybody wants to uh, wants to at least feel, and I, and I hate that term too, feel like um, what they're doing is normal and correct and blah blah blah. Everybody everybody wants that. Nobody wants to feel like a, 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 like, like the outcast or if they're on the outside of something. So, um, mm -hmm. and <laughs> a lot of us a lot of us joked with um, some of the people who were th that we know because I teach music. Um, so I'm in the art. So sometimes you run across those people who are, who, who, who are gay. Um, be careful what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just be careful what you're asking for. Uh, so, but, but, but in any case, these rules only, only really apply. Things we're talking about in part one and part two. Um, and you got to, y'all just have to just wait for part two. It'll be soon. It'll be right after part one, not today. Um, but it's going to be a, a YouTube, I almost said a lube tube. <laughs> a YouTube. Wait a minute. Live. Ah, ah, I'm better. <laughs> a YouTube live, um, thing that we're going to do and it'll, it'll be in the evening. It'll be after, after nine o'clock. So if you want to participate, um, in the chat room and you, and, and you want your kitties, um, to be put away, oh, put to bed and give them a bottle of Benadryl or whatever. Um, how, however you can go to sleep. I'm not saying you should drug your children, but you've all thought about it. Um, so, um, so if you want to participate more, um, more openly, um, and my suggestion is that, that, that if you're married, have your spouse watch, watch with us, watch with you. Um, yeah, I mean, and, 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 and then there'll be room for comment and, and we'll answer we'll answer questions as best we can, just like just like now. We'll answer questions as best we can um, to see you know what where where everybody where, where everybody is. 
Um, but I think yeah, I, I think that that Ken, you're right. Ken Bauer uh, comments in in the chat room, not not nearly enough people couples talk about it um, because I think a lot of people make assumptions. Mm -hmm. They make assumptions that, and I think that that, that sometimes guys are taught that oh, um, one of two things will happen: you'll have more sex than you've ever had before, or you won't have any. That you, that, that your sex life are, are over. <laughs> uh, <laughs> neither thing is correct. <laughs> Neither thing it can go either, is correct. Either way. Um, so we, so you'll see. Um, I think that the um, the sex continuum will follow the normal path of sex continuums of people in your age group and your busy level and your children level. All those things will factor in. Um, but you need to have those. But you need to have those conversations. And you also need to understand. I, I think that we all, we also have to understand that. That men and women look at sex differently, because yes. that's how we're that's how we're drawn. We're made up. That that's way. how we're you know that's how we're made. Um, men normally look at sex as part of uh, or, or 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 the re the receiving of love um, in a more visual or physical way. Um, and and again, we'll get more into that in 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 part two. So you want to tell your friends about part two, and you guys want to show up. Um, We'll advertise here on Debbie's Facebook and the Real Talk with Devin Will page and my page, and on the website. So you may, you you, Be ready. you want to make sure that you don't Get miss part two. Um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't get a notepad. That way, there won't, there won't be no there'll be no evidence. And some suggestions, you know, people ask, you know, how often should you have sex? And wasn't it? It it depends. That's why you have to discuss it because it depends on your you two, the relationship that you have. Because um, if you're in the honeymoon stages, you know, first time, you know, you're newly married, especially. If you both were virgins, you know, which we rarely see these, it's a rarity, <laughs> but um, then you should be having a lot of sex, <laughs> you know, in the early stages, uh, unless you're old, older, you know, and you're not capable of it, but sex should be a big part on your honeymoon, during the few first few years that you're married and stuff, you know, we talk about that all the time about <laughs> how it used to be on year one and two. Uh, yeah, and we'll get into more specifics, not about us, but about y'all um, on, on 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 part two. But but understand that there, you know what people listen. Y'all read them books. Y'all go to y'all go to the books and read all the books, and people telling you about how often to have sex. There isn't any cut and dried anything. That's why y'all got to talk about it mm -hmm. and feel okay to talk about it. First of all, okay, I don't want to hear about, man, this is embarrassing. What? What? This is your This This is the person you, that you decided that you were going to spend the rest of your life with. And you, and, 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 you now, and now you're back in middle school and you're embarrassed and you're giggling. <laughs> really? Maybe you have more more assessments to do if you're still embarrassed. Maybe you're not ready for marriage. Maybe you're not ready. Maybe maybe you're not ready for marriage if you're not willing to have a, a a you know what a a real discussion about about sex and your sex life and 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 how you see it and how you see it going forward and how, how you see it, it is now and and how to improve it and paying attention to what your spouse likes, likes. or likes and 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 and, and is looking for. Um, and it's even and, and 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 if it's even possible, because the thing about talk, talking about it, sometimes you're not satisfying your partner if you don't talk about it, and they may say, "Well, I, you've been doing something to them for years and years." You're losing in the part two. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're in the part two. I'm going to part two. We'll talk about yeah. that kind of we'll, we'll talk about that kind of stuff later. You got to talk about, and that and that's the point of part one. You have to have that discussion, and you have to be okay. Yeah, you got to be, and you got to be okay with it. And you and 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 Debbie said about a million times we've done. This is our thirteenth or fourteenth cast. Um, that you have to know who your partner is. You have to know who your spouse is. You have to you have to listen to what they say. You have to watch what they do. You have to know who they are. 
that's why it's important <laughs> about spending time. We were together. driving home yesterday morning from church. And we passed a, a, a pickup truck with uh, one of those portable basketball goals in them <laughs> that I thought was in there in a, in a really precarious way. And, and, and I said, uh, and, 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 and said, Debbie said, I want one of those. And I said, immediately, no, you don't. <laughs> and then she said, well, how do you know I don't want that? I said, because I've known you for almost 40 years. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you don't want a portable basketball goal in that driveway out there. No, you don't. I wanted to play some basketball. No, you don't. <laughs> you want to play any basketball. <laughs> you do not want to get out there and shoot hoops with <laughs> with those neighborhood rap scallions. No, you don't. You don't want them down here <laughs> at In your back. No, because I know you don't. You can be like, go tell them to go home. You should be telling me, go tell them to go home. <laughs> like, it's your goal. You tell them to go home. Drag it in the backyard. So I'm like, no, no, you don't. And I kept thinking, okay, so you want new countertops or you want a basketball goal outside? Mm. I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> but and, and, and the point is, you have to know who your partner is. And you have to be, and, and in order to, to know who your partner is, you have to know a lot about them. Uh, and, and part of knowing about them is knowing, is being able to talk about the sex life part. You have to, it is, a requirement. It's great if you could talk about it beforehand, and I think that people who may have been married beforehand may have a leg up. <laughs> no pun intended. Part two. No pun, in- <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended on the people who are married first time um, because they've, I mean, because they've already experienced all of that um, in, in 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 the confines of their marriages. So I'm thinking that it it, it is probably important. Um, they know how important it is to have that conversation beforehand. I think people who have not been married before don't really realize, and like Debbie was saying before, they think all that's going to somehow, I don't know, work I itself out magically because of the, the love and the and, 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 and all the stars in your eyes and all that stuff will work out you just like it does in the movies. Have wonderful sex. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be wonderful and and, and there'll be and, and, and there'll be those, the fluffy curtains and the and the wind blowing. Oh, it'll be it'll be it'll, it'll, it'll be awesome. It'll be awesome. Romantic music and the music will play. Somehow the orchestra will end up in your bedroom, uh, <laughs> which is weird too. But um, and that's and 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 without having real adult discussions about real adult topics um, that concern you both. So yes. the whole idea of this morning, a part of a part one, is to make sure that that you're okay. That you've got to be okay with having those discussions. You've got to be okay with having those talks. And, and and having them in a way that isn't accusatory, that isn't um, complaining, but on but but honest and you know and open, um, because that's the way that you're going to be able to um, sustain that part of your relationship, and maybe even sustain all of your relationship, all of your marriage for I don't know seventy, eighty, and, ninety uh, years, and studying uh, about sex, you know. Um, a lot of times we we say, well, I don't know what that, you know, when you're newlywed or you're you were a virgin in the beginning and you don't know what goes on or what anything like that. You got to get some books and read and go on the Internet. We have the Internet now, you know, and you can study different things. What that, is this witchcraft you call the internet? <laughs> that that can can help you to learn what you need to do. Um, you know, show yourself. You know, re- even the Bible tells you stuff that you can do within your marriage. Like my husband just quoted about. You know, read if you're a Christian and you want to read read the Corinthians and 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 um, the Song of Solomon is a, a romantic. Uh, chapter in the Bible, you know, and and my husband likes to quote from that a lot. <laughs> Having to do with breasts of youth, and we'll talk about all that, uh, about all that later in part two. in part two. But again, this morning, if I if we can convince you to do anything, start having the discussion. Start having the discussion. Um, if that's been, you know what, and and if that's not been, a, a, you know what, a a um, a here's something else. 
and and no pun intended. If that's not been a bone of contention in your marriage, cool. <laughs> Awesome. Sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Never knew how many of these um, things, phrases we Words. use all the time have some weird sexual connotation or can't or, or, or can or could have. If your some. mind is there. If, your mind if you haven't, we talked about it at the time. But that, mm-hmm. if that's not been a problem in your, in your marriage, super. Um, but if you want to if you want to make it more than not just a problem, if you want to make it something make it better, better when you make it something that is awesome in your marriage, then you're going to have to have that discussion. Um, you're just going to have to. So it because if, if not, it's like, it's like everything else in life. There's a, there's a, a concept called entropy um, where things go from order to disorder. To give you a quick example. If you watch an old frame house, a house made of wood that people lived in and it seemed cute and wonderful. And then they move out or they die. And it seems like suddenly is as it's sitting as, as it's sitting there, it crumbles. It just falls apart literally. Parts fall off of it, and before you know it, it's falling down. It's unlivable. It, that's entropy. Things go from order to disorder, and, and unless you work on it, you know, unless, unless you're in it all the time, um, then that'll be sections of your marriage. That'll be sections of your life. Um, I went to an Anthony Robbins thing way, 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 way a thousand years ago. And the phrase I pulled out of there was, um, if, if, first of all, if you're not flying, you're dying. Um, so the idea is that if you're not working on something constantly, um, then it's going to be getting worse. Nothing will stay the same. If you work on it, it'll, it'll get better or stay the same. But if you're not working on it, it'll get worse. So if you decide not to talk about it, it's not going to, nothing is going to improve. It's not going to magically get better. If you don't study about it and try to learn more to to please each other or, or, you know, just understand about frequent. I mean, there's all sorts of things that we can talk about. And we're going to talk about in in part two is is the idea of of talk about it. It's okay, And you know what? Here's a here's a crazy part. Um, There are people who have had children. People who have had children, and we'll talk more, and we're really talking more about this in, in, in two, that still don't talk about sex with their partner. They have had children. So you know what has had to happen for them to have children? They didn't have like a, um, a chemistry set in the garage and make, and make, and and make, and make children. Wait, hang on a second. Can you give me some, some washing powder? <laughs> 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 so they've had children. And they can't face each other. And they're still sort of embarrassed about things sexually in their marriage. They got a house full of kids and they're still sort of. So that's that that's something that we don't well, we don't talk about that. Really? Um, so that's something that um that I, I, that I don't think that's a good idea, and we're gonna really ex, uh, get into and I want you and, and this is uh this is a teaser. We really want you to tune in to um to stay tuned to Deb's page, and uh, we're going to give you the um, the time, and I don't have it now, um, of when we're going to talk about some of these things more in depth. Yes, we're going to talk about um, when I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, going to talk about when you should have sex, when you should agree not to, all the times. Um, but all of these things are up to y'all. It's up to your relationship. All. All up to y'all. Yes, and, and and my pastor asked me yesterday when I was telling about our, our, you know what if this is going to be R rated, and I don't know if it's going to be R rated or not, but it's going to be for grown ups. It's going to be for grown ups. Going to mm-hmm. be for people who. And if you're not comfortable talking about this stuff, then you're you're cheating your marriage, your your relationship. Period. You need to be able to talk about this type of stuff with your partner, um, in order to make your your sex life great. If you make your sex life better, you have a very good chance of making sure that your marriage, your, your marriage and relationship improves um, as you move forward in life too. So, it, you know, so, so we are going to talk about some things um, openly um, and, and, it's, and it's not either of our um, intent to shock anybody because um, you know, time for that. Uh, but we will be talking openly and honestly. So that's why we're going to not, not do it at nine o'clock in the morning um, here on Facebook. We're going to do it. We're going to talk about that stuff on YouTube 
later. And yes, we want you to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Yes, we want, <laughs> yes, yes. It's not now. So that you get notifications. On the- if you're not able to find out when or be on Facebook or whatever, like you'll get a notification telling you, hey, we'll endeavor live. We are, we're live. We're oh, talking oh, sex. Oh, <laughs> or, we, or, or, or we have posted it or, or, or whatever. So that's um, that's what we want to do. Um, make sure that you have these conversations. Make sure that you're okay with having these conversations. Um, because if you're not, then like like Debbie said, you then then you're cheating your marriage and, and you're cheating yourself. Things could be better. Mm-hmm. Things in your life could be better, but because you, you're like you know, eleven year old, you act like an eleven year old. And you're all giggly and embarrassed. You're cheating yourself. There are eleven year olds having better sex. Well, you know, so <laughs> that's sad. That's but true. You know, so I don't think they are. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think they are. Nowadays, it. it would not well, surprise well, me. Well, they are, but they're not having better sex. No. Um, we'll talk about it in part two um, about this kind of stuff. And I think I think it's really important that this is a discussion that we gotta have. That we've gotta yes. start having, and we gotta start having more openly um it's it's kind of insane that we've got to have this conversation over the internet um but we need to have this conversation we, we all need to have to start having this conversation in your houses in your kitchens in your bedrooms in your cars um while you're driving to the grocery store uh or whatever um because you talk about everything else you do all right, listen, it's time to get out of here and make room for somebody else. Time went by fast. It did. It always goes by when it always goes by fast when you're talking about sex. Always <laughs> does. Or when you're talking around sex, it always does. All right, we gotta get out of here and make room for somebody else. So until we until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody. And for goodness sakes, take care of yourself. We'll see you when we see yes. you. Peace. Peace. We're out. Need to.